let me show you these are the pin cushions so they actually pin on as a brooch and then you use them as such the good thing about these pin cushions is when you have these when you're turning or you're really getting tangled up with the fabric this can get caught whereas this is always out of the way so they're brilliant and also they're lovely as gifts with the lavender inside just give it a squeeze and it's a moment of de-stress um, so you can experiment with your sashiko patterns and yeah just play so this is um, a pattern that's free on the website so you just download that one from the sashiko page it's called fun but these you can just use the templates and trace through the design onto the fabric yeah have fun with it and happy sewing a sashiko heart on felt is our project for today and what we'll need is this is wool felt so you just draw the template around the edge and cut two out and we're going to need a pin so this is for a brooch but you can just use an ordinary household pin and we're going to need a small piece of fabric just a scrap this is going to go on the back of the piece and then we're going to sew the pin on like that so this will make it super strong so when you're wearing it, it doesn't break uh, this is DMC Ecru coloured embroidery floss and we're going to need a needle and also another needle with just regular thread in it that's for sewing this on and then we're going to fill the heart with lavender. It's going to smell gorgeous. <laughs> and it, these are really lovely. If you make two and you give one to your best friend, they're really lovely gifts and they feel so special when you make them. Oh, and one more thing. This is a friction pen or a heat erasable pen. So if you have another one at home, that's fine. If you don't, then just a pencil will be fine or chalk. <clears throat> right, so first of all, we're gonna draw the design. So I'm going to draw an, a line about one centimeter from the edge of the heart. And we're going to just do a straight sashiko line around there. If it's not perfect, it's no problem. It's just roughly centimeter if you want to measure that's absolutely fine so because this is uh, going to be erased later if you make a mistake and you add another bit it's no problem at all it's all going to disappear with a hairdryer it's amazing and now I'm going to do some stars in the middle so I'm actually going to do the, the two center lines slightly longer and then the so, and then shorter ones on the edge. So it looks like they're a bit sparkly. And it doesn't matter how you place them. Like real stars, they're random. But I think there is order. <laughs> but mine, there's no real order. It's just... Um, I think random looks nice. There we go. And I think one more. I don't know where to put it. Let's put it. I'm going to leave it. Let's leave it be and just see how it goes and then decide later. Right, so to start off, take your thread. So you've got three strands. You've split one of the one of these six strands in half. So we're going to make a knot. So we're going to do a quilter knot. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and that coil you hold gently between, gently but firmly between your thumb and forefinger of your left hand and pull the thread slowly through. It creates a brilliant little knot. And then we just slip that off to about half a centimeter. Now to start stitching, come up close. We're going to start from the center of the heart. And each stitch is about three millimeters long. But again, if it's slightly longer or shorter, it's absolutely fine. When you're going around corners, just do a couple. When you're going around corners, just do a couple. And you can't really see what I've just done there, so I'm going to go back down and do that stitch again because it seems to have vanished. better. You can see something there. When you go on a long straight stretch you can do lots of stitches in a row. Keep gently easing the fabric flat once you've finished a row. When you get to the corner, put your needle in so that even if the stitch is shorter, that's fine, just so that you get a really nice corner. It's really noticeable if that's wonky. And if you've got a long stretch, if you concertina the fabric, it makes it easier to pull through and then flatten the fabric and gently ease it. When you're finished, put your needle in to go back to the bottom of the work. And now we're going to do the star, so I'm going to do the star that's nearest to my thread. So I'm going to do the two long ones first. And to get a really straight line, if you put your, your needle like so, from your starting point thread where it's coming out, and then go in leave a gap in the middle and do the other leg all at one go then you'll get a really straight line and do again the other long one now we're going to do the, the short ones remember if they're not perfect it's absolutely fine it makes them look like they're twinkling and 
just move on and do the next ones. Here we go, on hair dryer. How amazing is that? It's still thrilling every time I do it. Freestyle it. Okay, so now we finished the front. Now we're going to make the back. So we're going to attach this to the outside of the heart and we're going to have it so that the pin is towards the pointy end so at the bottom of the, the clasp there so the first thing we're going to do because this is going to be hidden it's going to be inside the heart we're just going to tack this on so again do a quick quilter's knot. Hold and pull. Now, because the pin is going to be in the middle, that's the only place I'm going to sew. So I'm going to do tiny little stitches along the centre just to hold it in place. Just little tacks, doesn't have to be strong. And then we're going to take the needle and push it through to the front of the work, like so. And then we're going to take our pin Place it in the centre and now we're going to stitch through those little holes. So now we've finished stitching and we want to secure this so because the, the back side of this heart is never going to be seen, it's going to be stitched inside, we take the thread through to the back and again just do a little loop through the, through the fabric, like so. Do two twists, one, two. Pull this back down towards the base of the needle. Just hold it gently between with your thumb on top, pull it through gently and you've created a knot. You can do a couple if you don't feel sure about it because you don't want it to undo later. Just round twice and pull through. Now we've got two knots, it's going to be secure. So just cut it off with half a centimetre left, loose and we're done. How amazing is that? <coughs> So that's the pin, all secure. If it's a bit wonky like that, it's no problem at all. And we're going to take the front side of the heart. Now we're going to sew them together. So I'm going to get some more thread. So again, the best length for this is about 40 centimetres, which is from the tip of your finger to your elbow, or two pulls of this skein. One, 
So, and there we go. Let me pull it, cut it with that bit. And then we split it. So this is one way of splitting. You can take the individual strands out. So if you hold this between thumb and forefinger, the one half, and between these two fingers, the other half, and gently untwist and pull like so. But you can see it tangles, so you have to keep that control or you will get a knot. But that's a quicker way to do it. The, the foolproof way that never tangles is to take one thread at a time out of the six strands. And then if you pinch it between your thumb and forefinger and push through the eye. And this is a cruel needle, as you can see. The eye is large, which is really helpful. So we're going to start again with our knot. And then gently ease that down. And this is going to be hidden again, it's going to be on the inside, but you can cut it to half a centimetre. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stitch around the outer edge, but we're going to leave a gap of about four centimetres, five centimetres long, where we're going to fill it. As you can see, my hearts are slightly off kilter, one slightly larger than the other. So if you want to, you can trim it back, the one at the back, just to make it even. So to start off, we're going to start from in between. So we take the needle, and we're going to go in between, and then come out through the front, like so. And then push those tails inside. I'm just going to do a securing stitch to start with, like so. Make sure they're really well lined up. You can pin it if you wish, or you can tack. Because they do sometimes move. So now we want to aim the needle towards the centre of this stitch that we've just created. And we're going to loop it round the back like so. It's going to create a tiny little knot that's going to be really secure. Then again, round the back. You can draw little dots 
um, around the edge if you're unsure about getting evenly spaced stitches. This is blanket stitch. I actually like it a bit random. So if there's some others slightly further, some are slightly closer. It's a lovely stitch. Um, it's great if you do it large on the edge of blankets and bags and it looks gorgeous and is super strong, very practical. It does remind me of Scotland, I'm not sure why. Oops. Come to the end of the thread so we need to secure that so it's already got a tiny knot but we're going to just do another knot one one two loops hold it gently pull the thread through and then we're going to take this and thread it back into the piece and you can come out through the fabric like so and then cut this flush to the fabric like so and now we take our next oops, next piece of thread Again, do a knot. Quarters knot. So now we're going to come up from the inside of the heart where the next stitch is going to come. We're going to push that messy knot inside, like so. And now we're going to stitch just as though we're continuing. Remember how we started? So we go back to the centre of the knot. Let's do a quick, tiny knot. It's really secure now. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to fill this with lavender so we keep the needle and thread attached 
just going to pop that in the edge where there's not going to be any fill. This is going to smell lovely. If you're stressed, just give it a little squeeze. And you get a lovely lavender smell. Stuff it generously because um, lavender seems to shrink after a while. So brush it in firmly. You can pin this closed or you can just pinch it with your fingers. I'm just going to pinch. So now you take your needle again and just continue exactly as before. And these make lots of lovely gifts so you can use this method to make um, lavender pillows with felt you can make mug mats obviously not filled all sorts of things little purses stitch okay. so to secure it I'm going to go into the first stitch that we did because otherwise there's going to be a gap there like so I'm just going to wrap it so it's made a little knot and now I'm going to I'm always worried about how it's done up or not I'm pushing the needle through to the next or the second stitch we created and I'm going to do a tiny little knot there as well. It's probably overkill but I always feel I'd rather do two and now I've made it rather messy but if you push your needle through and then you come out of the heart, like so. Pull the thread, vanishes it. And then if you pull just a little bit, make it taut. And then cut flush the fabric without cutting the fabric it should pop away and there you go a sweet little brooch